check. Check. Okay, welcome back off the break. You can see this is recording, okay. Okay, so we were looking at the first guidepost. We'll look at some examples how the Word of God, um, you know, uh, teaches us different things in our life. Okay, um, we we'll look at uh, an exciting example about marriage. Uh, all of you young people here. So, you know, when you come to a season in your life where you know you have to settle down, you have to get married, okay, um, uh, some of you think, should I get married? or not okay is it god's will to get married or not okay so then you're praying and you know uh, but god has already revealed it in his will uh, his will in his word okay um, yes god wants each one of you to get married unless he tells some people specifically or no okay but the rest of us we all know it's god's will for us to get married and how do we know it's written in god's word Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. What does it say? Yes. So, you know, man will leave his father and mother and join to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Then the next question is, okay, I know God wants me to get married, but who do I marry? Now, that's a big question mark. Okay, so who do you marry? So what is the criteria or so what things that you know uh, uh, who's the kind what kind of person does god want me to marry so does the word of god answer us on that yes god, the word of god has answers for every situation every question that we have in life the word of god uh, has answers for that okay second corinthians 16 was 14 and 15 says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers why what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness okay now you know um, you know for example you fall in love with somebody and you come to know that that person is not born again it's just uh, you know once in a while church going person goes on good friday or easter or christmas you know he believes there is a god and that's jesus but you know he's, he's not born again yeah, but you're madly in love with this person or you suddenly realize that this person is an atheist he doesn't believe in the existence of god or you know he's the person is a hindu or from, from another faith okay uh and then you're praying and saying god show me this is your will and you're not hearing from god why you're not hearing from god why because he's already revealed in his word that it's not his will it says do not be yoked together with unbelievers okay but you're saying oh, oh i'm going to do a great thing you know if i'm going to marry this unbeliever i'm going to you know bring him or her to the faith so i'm bringing somebody to the faith god should be happy about it you know and um, uh, you know you uh, you say okay i mean i'm, I'm sure god is going to work i'm bringing somebody to the to the faith but you never know the person can really come to the faith or not you can change your faith it happened to solomon right with all his thousand wives worshipping all the different uh, gods and goddesses, so-called, he started worshipping them and building temples for them and, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, burning incense and sacrifices to them. Such a sad state of a man who was worshipping God and so much in love with God. So they can lead you astray. Okay, you, you're so confident you're going to bring them to Christian faith, but they can also lead you astray. So then, you know, you think of going to your pastor and uh, and you know you want to because your pastor has to solemnize the wedding so you go and you're just praying God let him not let him not ask the question whether the person is a believer or not and then you know the question comes you say no pastor but you know he's there he's wanting to know the you know he's willing to accept Christ or she's willing to accept Christ she's a wonderful girl she's a he's a wonderful boy but pastor saying he's a he's not a believer see and so you're asking why cannot i marry a unbeliever amos chapter 3 verse 3 says 
can two walk together unless they are in agreement right i'm sure you have uh, you you your best friend is somebody who's who agrees with you on most things is somebody who's totally disagreeing with you arguing with you fighting with you i'm sure the person will not be your best friend right so in uh, you know uh, god's word has answers for every situation every thought every question that we have uh, let's look for the uh, another example about divorce okay um now you marry somebody you're in love with somebody you marry that person and then you begin to realize that you both are not on the same things most of the time you're fighting you can't stay together and you are ready to go for a divorce and then you're praying god is this your will or uh, you know uh, you marry somebody who your parents asked you to marry and then you know you're in this workplace and there's somebody who uh, you're working along with this person agrees with you this person is very nice to you very loving to you you know you get along with this person very well and you're suddenly thinking hey you know i'm not getting along with my husband uh, he's totally contrary different to who, who i want as a husband here is this man in my office you know he's exactly the person who i want to uh, you know wanted to marry you know has all the qualities so why not divorce my husband and get married to this man okay so is it god's will to divorce no because the word of god says in malachi chapter 2 verse 16 god says i hate divorce he hates divorce the divorce is not an option okay divorce is not an option so uh, and so also in every other thing whether it's adultery whether it's lying whether it's cheating uh, getting dishonest gain uh, whatever you know um, looking at things that are displeasing unholy um, uh, indulging in, in addictive uh, behaviors all of that each and every area of our life god's word instructs us it trains us in righteousness so we need to know god's word to know how to live in righteousness to know what is right and wrong and to uh, you know to know how to walk in his ways okay uh, look at psalm 23 verse 3 it says he leads me in the paths of righteousness god will never lead you in the paths of unrighteousness okay um uh, sometimes we say you know um uh, uh we can justify our actions okay and say um you know uh, maybe i married a man who's uh, my parents got me married to an unbeliever uh, to a person who's who's not born again and now i started going to church you know and i uh, and i have accepted christ as my savior lord and savior but my husband is not he doesn't come along with me to church to prayer meetings he's not interested about god and you stay going to church you start volunteering in church and then you meet this man or you meet this woman who is uh, you know is totally sold out for god who's uh, doing everything for god and you become very friendly with that person and um, and then it slowly moves on to you know you both of them both of you are start beginning to fall in love with each other so you can justify your action and say i can divorce my husband because now i am born again he is not born again okay he is not following the lord but i am following the lord and i want somebody to come with me to church somebody to involve with me just like this man or this woman who is in church who does everything who is sold out for god who loves god so i think it's okay i think it's not even for me to divorce my husband and to marry because i'm marrying somebody who's born again and we are going to together build god's kingdom we are together serving god imagine what an impact we can make so all of these things you know lies that we can fill our minds with and the devil is saying okay you can do it it's okay everybody is doing it you also can do it right like everybody in your class is che uh, cheating or copying the test you can also do it right everyone is having an uh, a, 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 a relationship even before they get married they're doing a whole lot of things outside marriage it's okay for you to do it it's acceptable but we need to really go back to god's word because god's word is our standard we need that's why i said we need to renew our god's uh, uh, our mind daily with god's word because we need to replace the lies with the truth of god's word advice satan can subtly bring in things um and you know he can um uh, he can uh, you know um lead us even when we are in the ministry 
right? Many men and women of God have fallen because of extramarital relationships or because of money issues, no, no, not being accountable, saying, anyway, I'm serving God. This is my church. You can, I can do anything with the money that I get, you know? But we're accountable to God for even that money that comes. It's tight money. It's God's money. It's not my money it, it, because I run the church, but it's God's money. I need to use it in a way that's honorable. I'm accountable to people who are giving that, uh, that tight money, even the time that we spend. You know, we are accountable to God for the time that we spend. Did you know that we are going to give stand before God, not only for judgment for our sins, but also for the, the, the way we spend our time? It's written in the Gospels. We are going to be accountable to God for the time that we spend. Okay? So it doesn't mean that I'm in ministry, I can do whatever I want, you know. But even in, in ministry, I'm accountable to uh, the, the way I spend my Time. Even your secular job, you know, you have eight hours. You can't just sit be sitting there and looking at your screen, looking at the news today, uh, looking at the videos, uh, look your shopping on online uh, while you are at work. No, that's not honoring God. That's not honoring God with your time because those eight hours you're accountable to that office who's paying you, right? You need to spend that time in an honoring way, and God is watching you what you're doing in those eight hours. So if we are not uh, if God's word is not filling our hearts and minds, you know, then we can uh, be led astray in doing things that dishonor God. So the first thing is, um, you know, uh, the, the first principle is recognize the general teaching and instruction from God's word. God's word is our standard. Okay. The second one is recognize the seeds in your life. Okay. Recognize uh, the seeds in your life. Now, the, the word of God is, um, you know, compared to a seed. Okay, Luke chapter 8 verse 11 says, the seed is the word of God. When Jesus talks about the parable uh, of the, the sower in Mark chapter 4 verse 26 and 32 and Luke chapter 8 as well. In Luke chapter 8 uh, verse 11, it says that God's word is compared to a seed. Okay, in John chapter 12 as well. John chapter 12, I think it was verse 24. You know, unless uh, the wheat falls down to the ground and dies, it cannot uh, bear fruit. Okay, so here God is comparing his life and the life of his people. So the seed also uh, is compared to life. Now, uh, what else is seed compared to in the word of God? Compared to life, it's compared to God's word. What else? Okay, your faith as a mustard seed. Thank you, Charisma. What else? Offering. Money, yes. Money is also compared to uh, a seed where you invest and you uh, bear fruit. It's like, you know, you would put it in the, in the, uh, to use and it bears fruit for you. Yes, multiplies. What else? Love. The kingdom of God. Remember the parables, the kingdom of God uh, is like a sower which we went to uh, sow seeds. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 32. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Okay. Yes, Prabhu says uh, offspring, seed, seed of man, offspring. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, so the kingdom of God is also likened to a seed. Now, what is the meaning of kingdom of God? Kingdom of God is where? Is any place? Where is the kingdom of God? It's here. It's now. The kingdom of God is also in your heart. Okay? It's also in a geographical area. It's also in a place, but it's also in your heart. So the kingdom of God is basically God's rule, God's reign, his dominion, his government, his authority uh, in your life and also in a certain geographical uh, place. Okay, so the kingdom of God functions or operates according to the seed principle. Okay, in Mark chapter 4, um, which is given in page number 16 of the PDF copy, Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 32, there are two um, uh, parables here. And both these parables uh, reiterate to us or repeats to us that the kingdom of God is like a seed. Okay, So the kingdom of God is like a man who went out to scatter seeds on the ground. 
Okay, and also in verse 31, it says, um, it's like a mustard seed which is sown on the ground. It is small, uh, smaller than all the seeds, but when it's sown, it's grow it grows up and it's greater than all the herbs because it shoots out branches and the birds of the air come and nest under its uh, shade. So uh, what does it mean here? Okay, and we also see that God actually follows this uh, seed principle uh, in our uh, in the way He functions as well. Now, if you take a seed, it looks lifeless. Okay, it looks dead. Uh, but if you take the seed and put it in the ground, okay, and water it and give it good manure, what happens? It germinates. It sprouts. It becomes a plant. It grows into a tree. It uh, gives fruit or it gives flowers, whatever. Okay, so many of the things that God does in our lives, He follows this pattern or principle of working. Okay, now the seed looks dead, it looks lifeless, but the seed has life, it has potential. Okay, it has life, it has potential when it's watered, it's nurtured, it gives us what we desire, it bears fruit. So many of the things that God does in, in our life, follows this pattern okay now god initiates things in your life please listen carefully god initiates things in your life and sometimes it's like a seed okay something very small it's very significant it's lifeless but it is full of life it has the potential when you are able to when it does it have life and when does it have potential when you're able to recognize it when you're able to build on it when you're able to nurture it are you able to grow that into something uh, to be a blessing to many people? Okay, so um, now God wants to do great and mighty things in and through his kingdom as well. Uh, through your life, he wants to extend his kingdom. He wants to build his kingdom. And uh, he also uses the seed principle to operate, to establish his kingdom. That means, you know, God, when he begins something, uh, awesome, mighty, great, and powerful. He wants that to begin in his kingdom. Uh, it doesn't come with great funfair. It doesn't come with great pomp and show. It doesn't come with, uh, you know, a very spectacular way, but it comes like a seed. It comes very small. It comes very insignificant, very humble. But even in that seed, you know, God is looking at a great, awesome, mighty plan that he wants to birth, that he wants to initiate in and through your life or in his kingdom here on earth. So don't look for, you know, sometimes we are waiting for God to do great, mighty, spectacular uh, things, but sometimes it comes in a very small, quiet, humble beginning, but it carries the potential to do something great and tremendous. Okay, All of men and women of God who started, they didn't start. Big. They didn't start with a church, 5,000 members. They started a church with few members, but it grew to 5,000. It grew to uh, 10,000. So also God releases seeds in your life, uh, seeds of his kingdom into your life, or even seeds of uh, spiritual destiny into your life. So what are these seeds? How do you know these seeds? It can be uh, opportunities, the opportunities that God brings in your life or God puts in your life. Maybe the seed now that... Uh, God has planted in your life is the opportunity to study in a Bible college. Or it can be, you know, it can, it's, it's a special opportunity that you have. It can also be, a, a seed can also be special people. You know, God can bring in special people who influence your life, uh, who move you, who shape you, uh, to bring about God's destiny, to bring about God's plan in your life. It can also be dreams. You know, a dream that God put in your life. I uh, I was quite um, awed at how God spoke to Sri Radha when she was sharing. Uh, God told her in her dream that she needs to go to Bible college and she goes to she has to go to All People's Church Bible College in Bangalore. She did not know All People's Church uh, and she did not know it was in Bangalore. Uh, but how did she come to know it? It was, you know, to the seed of uh, the, the way God operated, the seed principle. He showed it to her in her 
dream. So he gave her this opportunity to this to this dream. So you know, God could have put a dream in your life, a very and a vision in your life, very early uh, as you uh, 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 you know as you began your life as well. It can also be words, words of prophecy that people have spoken over your life. I think a couple of you, when you shared your own testimonies on Wednesday, you shared you shared that you know uh, people spoke over uh, my life that you would be doing God's ministry or you'll be in Bible college. I think even. Sri Radha, you also mentioned that, right? People uh, spoke over your life, yes? Okay, and that kind of changes the course of your life. So these are the seed principles. Let's look at some uh, biblical examples. Uh, example is Joseph. Uh, what was uh, the seed in Joseph's life? Dreams, right? When he was young, he saw um, the sun, moon, and the stars bowing down to him. So the sun is his father, the moon is his mother, and the stars, the 12 stars are his brothers and uh, he also sees you know um, uh, he's in the center of uh, these sheaves you know that they have gathered and all the sheaves are bowing down to him so uh, his brothers realize that you know are we going to bow down to you you're the youngest you know how can we bow down to uh, you but that was a seed god was showing him through his dream um, you know that um, you know that uh, he is he's having something great and some plans uh, for him in the future where his parents are going to bow down to him where his brothers are going down to going to bow down to him the next example is about moses you know um, moses supernaturally god arranged for him yeah god uh, supernaturally arranged for moses uh, you know to um, to be found by the princess uh, in the water in the river nile he was taken as her own son he was trained uh, in the uh, you know the wisdom of egyptians he was trained to be the next pharaoh he was trained to be the prince so that was the seed in moses's life but the bible tells us that in acts chapter 7 verse 22 moses was mighty in word and deed that means he was trained in the knowledge in the wisdom and also trained to be a leader and moses realized when he was in the palace that he his calling was not to be an egyptian but he was actually a uh, israelite and a hebrew and he realized that he, god has brought him in that position to deliver his people and he acts on it but he acts on it at the wrong time in the wrong place in the wrong way and it delayed of more 40 year period of god you know um, uh, delivering his people out of uh, egypt okay let's look at another example esther what was the seed in esther's life anybody knows what was the seed in esther's life that god used queen esther beautiful yes it's a beauty now can god use something as worldly as beauty to uh, as a seed to bring about his plan and will yes you know it was because of a beauty that of all the um, uh, the the women in um, uh, in persia that you know she was chosen and of all the women who were brought the beautiful woman the, the the king chose her as the queen okay and when she had to go and tell the king uh, you know to save her people uh, she fast and prays for three days and all the people fast and pray for three days and she dresses up beautifully and she goes to the inner court where the king is and you cannot go there without the king's permission or until the king calls you and if the king doesn't stretch out the scepter then you are taken away and you're killed because you're there uh, without the king's permission and when the king looks at uh, Esther he looks at her beauty and it's a beauty that brings him, brings her inside his presence, and she's able to, you know, um, deliver her people from, um, uh, from the, uh, Haman's uh, uh, evil plot. Okay. Uh, what about Paul? What is the seed in Paul's life? Paul was a great evangelist, a great missionary. He wrote many epistles. How did he get all this knowledge? The Malian. He was schooled under the most uh, uh, wise man of his day, the wisest teacher, and one of them was Gamaliel. And so he knew the Old Testament scriptures very well. He was so well versed in the Old Testament, and that was the seed that God used to, you know, um, uh, uh, for for Paul to further his. Uh, kingdom okay so we see that you know uh, in your own life see what are the seeds god has 
zone. Okay, giving you some example. I want you to think because looking at your seeds can also show you, you know, what is God's plan and purpose for your life. Write it down. Take those seeds very, very seriously. And you know, a warning is, you know, just like God uh, uses seeds uh, to show, uh, to reveal His plan and purpose for our lives, the enemy can also sow weed seeds. Remember when the, you know, the the farmer went and sowed, the enemy came and sowed weed seeds and the weeds came up, but the farmer did not pull out that uh, weed so because it would destroy the plant. So um, there are many uh, uh, seeds that the enemy can sow in our lives, which can choke and destroy God's seeds for our life. So we need to be very careful. Now, what are some of the weed seeds? Now, some of the weed seeds can be our parents, you know, our parents... Um, uh, divorce, you know, when the parents go through divorce, it has a huge impact on the lives of uh, children, okay? Sometimes parents speak negative things. You're constantly hearing of parents speaking negative things, okay? So that can be a weed which can destroy your life. For some of us, it can be abuse, you know, child abuse. Many of you are beaten up by your parents. You're not taken care by your parents. Some of us, uh, as uh, children gone, or even as grown-ups, we go through sexual abuse. You know, it leaves a dent in your in scar, in your emotional part. And these are seeds, weed seeds that the devil sows in, or uh, addictions, or passions. You know, and we need to get out of it. You know, whatever is our past, you know, we need to. Uh, ask God to shut those doors in our life. You know, we need to apply the blood of the Lamb, seal those doors uh, in the blood of the Lamb, and, you know, say, Satan, you have no access. Because, you know, Satan can use those things against us uh, to hinder us from knowing uh, or, uh, you know, from, um, uh, from pursuing the seeds that God has for us, seeds of, uh, uh, you know, that will build, help us build his kingdom and also will fulfill our spiritual destiny. So we need to uproot those seeds. We need to get out of it. Others, it will hinder the work of God in our lives. Okay. So that is the seed principle. Um, uh, the next one is uh, recognize the stirring within. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll spend some time in questions. If you have any questions, you can ask at the end of the class. Uh, recognize the stirring within. Okay, now uh, the example given here is about Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah was, uh, you know, a Jew. He was um, um, in, um, uh, you know, taken, um, you know, when the Babylonians came and destroyed Jerusalem, he was taken as captive. Now he is as a cupbearer to the Persian king. And, um, uh, you know, uh, one of the brothers go back to Jerusalem and they come back and, you know, Nehemiah asks him about the city of Jerusalem. And when he hears that the walls of Jerusalem are broken down and the gates are burned down, you know what happens to Nehemiah? He's so grieved, he's so broken, you know, he starts uh, weeping and mourning for many days and he spends time fasting and praying. Okay, and then we see that he goes back to Jerusalem with uh, permission from the king and he receives, you know, all the um, material required to raise up the wall of Jerusalem. He goes back and he builds that wall of Jerusalem in spite of all the difficulties and in spite of all the hindrances, he goes and builds the wall of uh, Jerusalem. Now, you know, this... Uh, you know, many people would have heard when all these uh, people came back from Jerusalem, they would have all heard, you know, the walls of Jerusalem are broken down, uh, the gates are broken down, but none of them felt, you know, very grieved about it or sad about it. But for Nehemiah, it was not just something that he was emotionally stirred up, grieved or saddened about, but something is stirring in his heart. That stirring in his heart actually led him to go back to Jerusalem leave his job, get permission to go back and to build a wall of Jerusalem and to build it in spite of all the difficulties and the hindrances that uh, that he uh, faced. And he says in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12, uh, that God put this in his heart. So the stirring in his heart was from uh, God. So now there are many things that God wants to do here on this earth. And how does he reveal his plan to us or his heart to us? It's through a stirring. Now, the stirring is not something that is very emotional, like changes like the weather. 
you know it's uh, you know now it's very bright and suddenly it will get gloomy and then dark rain clouds and it will start raining it's not like that emotional steering is not like that or steering that we are talking about here is not like that okay i'll give you an example now somebody comes to your church or comes to the bible college and they're presenting about a street children and your heart is very stirred and you start crying you see these children, you know, in the streets, how they're abused, how they have no family, how they have no homes, they're eating from the dustbins. You're very moved, you're crying, you're so sad. But, you know, uh, when you go away, go back, go out from this place, you know, you're eating your snack or you, uh, you're thinking, okay, I'm hungry, I want to eat something. And then I'm feeling tired, I go back and you go and sleep. And then you continue with your daily life and you forget about all that was presented all the emotional steering. But the steering that we're talking about, which is the guidepost here, which God uses uh, to reveal his plan and purpose in your life, is something is not emotional that will, will you'll forget about. But it's a constant steering. You know, when you're working, when you're doing your house chores, or when you're reading a book, when you're reading the Bible, it keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. And it, uh, you know, when you're sleeping, when you're eating, there's a constant desire. I have to do something about it. I have to do something about it. And you go and do it. Okay. That is the stirring in your heart, which is from God, uh, which God is using as one of the guideposts to show you what is your His plan and purpose for your life. Okay, I'll give an example from my own life. You know, um, uh, I never knew I would be in children's ministry. Okay, but when I was in Bible college, they put me in children's ministry for my uh, weekend. Uh, you know, we have weekend uh, ministry. I was in children's ministry. Uh, during uh, the week, I was in. They put me in children's ministry. Uh, now I said, I you know, when I was in my final year, I wanted to write my thesis. I wanted to work with drug addicts and alcoholics. Uh, so I wrote my thesis on that, and I went and did my internship for seven months in Kolkata. But even when I was working with drug addicts and alcoholics, God put me with children. They picked up from Haura platform. Uh, I also minister to street children. I also minister to children of, uh, you know, commercial sex workers or prostitutes. So I saw God taking me back again to children. Okay. And then I wanted to go back after Bible college and minister to uh, drug addicts and alcoholics. And, uh, you know, the person where I minister to in Kolkata, he told, who told me, you go back home, rest for some time, pray about it and come back. And God never took me back. And ever since, you know, uh, 2000, I graduated from Bible college. I've been in children's ministry and children's ministry not just in, in, in church-based children's ministry but it is for towards school children so even when i was in calcutta i was to minister in in a school uh, teaching scripture then i went after bible college i went to mizoram uh, up in the northeast there also i was ministering to children uh, in school and you know i was teaching scripture and when god brought me back to bangalore you know he uh, took me to a place where I was actually uh, um, uh, working in a place of it was a family ministry. I was not married. I was just, um, you know, handling all their programs for them, arranging all their programs. And suddenly one day my boss tells me, hey, you're good with children. Why don't you start a project with children? And back again with school children. So we wrote this whole project. We initiated this, this project. Uh, we wrote the curriculum and we started the school ministry, uh, you know, uh, this ministry in schools among children teaching scripture okay and then after that you know uh, i had to leave that place um, and and go and you know for uh, that happened in april and um, i ministered there for five to six years and in june when school started i was very heartbroken i said god schools have started i need to go back to schools and minister and here am i you know um, I don't have any place to go. I can't go because I'm not part of any project. And this deep stirring in my heart, you know, and God knows the seed that he's sown, he will provide the way. And God is telling me, you know, apply in all people's church. And when I went to all people's church portal, I see that there is no position for children's ministry and no position for school ministry. And God is telling me, apply. And I'm saying, God, there's no way, you know, all the opportunities there, I don't fit in. It's all for married people, it's for uh, life groups and blah, blah. I, I don't fit in in anything. If I go for the interview and they ask me which position you're applied, I'll be the first fool going for interview saying I'm not applied in any, I, I don't fit in any of these positions. And God is saying apply. God is saying go for the interview. I apply, they call me for interview and I'm really scared. I don't want them to ask me the question which 
post you are you applying for? I mean, which is an obvious question, right? And you won't believe it. I go to the interview, and it's the first interview where they had all the pastors sitting. And none of them asked me which position you applied for in APC. They asked me all the questions. And then pastor says, you know, we have an opening in schools to start school ministry. I was just quiet, dumbfounded. And pastor said, Will, are you willing to take it? I just was too shocked beyond words. I just sat down there, just kept looking at me. And he said, uh, will you take up that position? And I'm just looking at him. And he says, will you take up that position? And I'm just looking at him. And then I said, uh, yes, 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 and yeah, yeah. And I, he didn't know what I was going through. And when I was walking back, I was just you know, crying and saying, God, God, you know our passion. Actually, it's not my passion. It's God steering. You know, when God steers that, you never rest, you never sleep, you never do things till you are you know, uh, doing what God has uh, asked you to do. And you know, I started Catalyst. I wrote the curriculum. We started it in schools. We were doing around 82 classes in a week. We were going to different schools. We were uh, teaching 82, 74 periods in a week to school children, scripture to all the children. You know, and suddenly we stopped in 2018, 2019. We stopped and it broke my heart. You know, I kind of lost my passion. It really broke my heart. But then, you know, uh, I came and uh, I took a six month break and I was crying out to God again God, I want to go back to schools. That is where my passion is. That is where the steering is. And I came back after the six month break. Uh, Pastor said, You know, um, there are too many things on your plate. So, you know, you can get back to doing Catalyst. And again, I had my eyes were filled with tears. I never told him. But you see the seed principle, how it operates. It's something that God is stirring in your heart. You don't have to do anything about it. You just have to be passionate about God will do everything that is required for that. Okay. Uh, we also look at Acts chapter 17, where Paul goes to Athens and he has he sees the idols and a stirring in his heart for you know for God uh, for him to preach to the Gentiles about the true and living uh, God, okay? Now, notice that the stirring comes in your inner heart, okay? Uh, where you feel that provocation, where you feel that uh, compelling. And uh, it is God putting his plans, his purpose in your inner heart, okay? So, and is moving you into action to doing something about it let's look at a couple of scriptures in the old testament okay psalm 139 was 13 uh, the psalmist says in psalm 139 was 13 god formed my inner inward parts now the inward parts is basically talking if you translate that in the in the hebrews it means kidney but the same word which is used in the other places in the Old Testament refers to your soul, you know, your heart, your will, your emotions, your passions, your desires, your thoughts, your feelings. Now, God works in your passions, your desires, your thoughts, and your feelings. That is where He sows the seed, that is where He stirs you up, uh, that is where He counsels you, that is where He is giving you His, revealing you His plans and His. Uh, and its purposes for your life, okay? Uh, because this is formed by God, okay? Your inward parts is formed by God, and that is where God is uh, will be instructing you and counseling you. How do we know this? Psalm chapter 16, verse 7. This is not in your notes. Psalm chapter 16, verse 7. He says, you know, God counsels us in our heart. Again, the Hebrew word there, when you translate is kidney, which again means your soul, your passions, your desires, your thoughts, your feelings. So uh, where does God instruct us? In our inner heart, in our passions, in our desires, our thoughts, our feelings, because everything comes out from our inward part, our in, uh, inward part, okay, our heart. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. This also, all of these references are not there in your notes. I'm just giving it to you. It says, the spirit of man is a lamp of God uh, who searches what is in the inner depths of his heart. So what is a lamp of God? The spirit of man. Okay, the so spirit of man is the lamp of God. So I want you to keep this thought in your mind, that the spirit of man is the lamp of God. And let's look at Psalm 18, verse 28. Psalm 18, verse 28 says, you will light, 
uh, you will light my lamp okay so what is the uh, what is the lamp of god the spirit of man so here we see that god lights our lamp which means god gives us uh, illumination that means he gives us wisdom he gives us understanding where in the in our spirit man are you understanding what i'm saying yes no are you understanding or no okay we're looking at you know where is the steering that god is going to bring in in our lives it's in our in a uh, in our inner parts the inner parts in the bible actually means when you translate it it means kidney okay but in the old testament in various places the inward parts p a r t s the inward parts of your body is basically referring to your soul which is your mind will and emotions uh, your mind will and emotions is where your passions come your desires come your thoughts come your feelings come okay and god works in and through that how do we know that god counsels us in our inward parts what is our inward parts our heart our soul okay where our passions desires all generate psalm 16 was 7 god says that he instructs us he gives us counsel in our inward parts okay okay um psalm 18 as uh, our proverbs 20 was 27 says the spirit of man is a lamp of god the spirit of man is a lamp of god lamp plus what what does a lamp do it brings brightness it brings uh, it gives light so where is where can we find light or where can we find wisdom and understanding no when you burn the lamp or you put on the light it shows us everything in the room so where do we get our wisdom and understanding the word of god says the spirit of man so where is the spirit of man inside us okay pro and psalms 18 was 28 says um that you know psalms 18 was 28 says that god will light the lamp of man okay god will bring light in the lamp of man so what is the lamp of man the spirit of man okay and he it says that that he will give us understanding in our inward being okay and the last verse it says job chapter 32 verse 8 job chapter 32 verse 8 says there is a spirit in man okay there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty gives him understanding okay so the spirit of man is what the lamp of god okay and the lamp of god is where inside us okay and it says here the inspiration of the almighty gives us understanding which means all of these verses are basically saying that god gives us counsel understanding wisdom uh, he instructs us in our inward parts in our heart okay in our minds in our wills emotions desires god counsels us and instructs us so you need to give attention to your desires you need to give attention to your thoughts to your feelings to what you're feeling now suddenly some of you will be you know some of you feel a a, a burden for those who are sick that means that is a seed or a stirring within that god is using you to minister to sick people to be a sick evangelist uh, to be an evangelist to the sick people some of you god is stirring you for people who are um, alcoholics or drug addicts or to single women you know broken uh, women from uh, from broken homes uh, you know god is stirring up your heart it's not something that you feel bad about but constantly there is a move and where is god giving you all the counsel and understanding and the stirring in your spirit man in your in, in your heart in your inward part and that is where he will give you the counsel he will give you the understanding he will lead you and guide you to what to do about the stirring that he is giving in your heart how to you know uh, go about doing it so when god stirred me it was in my heart every time i felt okay i am not there in the school 
there was an emotional stirring, there was crying, and, and God was telling me, you know, He will open the doors. And God was telling me how I need to uh, do Catalyst, how, you know, I wrote the curriculum, God gave me the wisdom to write the curriculum, He gives me the wisdom, what are the things you need to implement, to implement even as, you know, um, I, I run Catalyst, this, this APC school outreach ministry. So all that counsel, wisdom, understanding, God is giving it us, uh, giving to us, and it's in our desire, passions that He uses to instruct counsel, to give us understanding, and to give us wisdom. So if you have a passion, you know, God can use that. Uh, that can be a stirring. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying, OK? But when, he, when you have a passion, you need to have the wisdom from God to follow through, OK? Not just saying, OK, God told me to start a big church in, um, in, um, in uh, like, uh, my Mizoram. So I just go to Mizoram and I start a big church. No, what do I do? I pray about it. You know, I wait for God's leading. I, I understand and see which city or which place in Mizoram God wants me to go and start church. So you can have a passion, but you need God's wisdom to pursue it, to follow through it, to bring that plan, purpose, desire, that stirring, that seed of God into reality to be a blessing to people's life. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll um, we'll look at the other seed principles in the uh, in the later classes. We just have five more minutes. So anyone has any questions? Uh, Krisha says, "What is the right way to use a seed of money when we start a church?" Okay. Uh, what is the right way to use a seed of money when we start a church? Is that from day one, you know, uh, maintain accounts of, um, you know, um, how much tithes come in, how much offerings come in, what was spent for, uh, for uh, what thing, even if you're buying tea, coffee, snacks, uh, for everything, maintain accounts from the very, very beginning. Okay? And make that available and um, uh, be transparent about your accounts to the church members. So they know that you know, you're accountable to the money that they're giving, to the tithes they're giving. Uh, I think that is one thing that uh, Pastor Ashish has done from the very first day when we started um, All People's Church. Everything was accounted for. Everything is very transparent. So even now, you know, at the end of the year, all the church members uh, receive an account statement of everything that this money that has generated come in how it was spent, what is the balance. So anyone and anyone can uh, raise up uh, questions. And also, um, you know, be very transparent with uh, the government in terms of managing your accounts, in terms of income tax, uh, be transparent, um, you know, so the government also knows that uh, here is a church that follows the laws of the land, they are accountable, they are transparent, they are neat in what they are doing. I hope I answered your question, Krisha. OK, anyone has any questions? Yes, Rin. Uh, you can have many stirrings in your heart. Um, Yes, but then again, you need to um, ask God. That's what he will give you the counsel and understanding to see which one you can pursue. Uh, you know, or sometimes the all the stirrings can also, you know, uh, be connected to just one thing. Okay. For example, um, um, I had a stirring. Uh, I, had a, I loved children. When I was a kid, I, I, a young person, I loved children. So any child lost in church, they say, find Selena and you'll find the child. Okay. And at, uh, when I was in grade 12, I started teaching in, in children's in Sunday school. Um, but I never knew that I'm going to become a children's pastor. One day I'm going to be in full-time ministry, ministering to children, which I never knew. But just the, 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 there was just this love for it. And whenever I heard, hear any child crying, it really stirs up my heart. You know, it's a burden. So there are different, different things. Love for children, uh, 
uh, when they're crying, I have a burden for them, uh, for those children who are lost. See, I, ha I have a burden for children, but uh, but not for specifically for children in the in church in 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 you know the the Christian circle. I have a burden for children in schools for non-Christian. How will they know the gospel? How will they the sons? So, children is a broad term, but then it's narrowed down to ministering to. Uh, spe specifically children in schools uh, and not to teens in college you know so there can be many steerings but uh, it'll all come to boil down to one focus thing which god wants you to focus on and uh, you know stir you up towards that and you know lead you towards that can we recognize the burden yes we can recognize the burden because that's what Nehemiah felt he felt very burdened that the walls of the city had broken down and the gates were burdened down. So it can also be a burden that uh, a steering in your heart can become a burden that uh, that's why, you know, a steering, how you know it's just an emotional steering or it's a steering from God is when it becomes such a burden that you have to go and do something about it. Okay, you have to go and do something about it because it's a burden. You have to lighten your burden. You have to do something about it. You go ahead and do it. And then you know that steering is not just emotional from you, but it is from God. And God wants is using that as a seed in your life um, to fulfill his plan and purpose and to bring about his kingdom. Uh, did I answer your question, Prabhu? Did I answer your question, Rin? Yes. Did I answer your question, Prabhu? Any more questions? No more questions? You're able to understand? OK. So I want you to think about what is the seeds in your life, OK? And also think about what God is steering you. Because through that, you will be able to understand God's uh, plan and purpose for your life, OK? So please um, uh, read the PDF. And if you want, you can go back and listen to the, uh, the videos that will be posted on the uh, Google Classroom. And uh, you can ask Diana Ma'am to add you all to the Google Classrooms because you will anyway be doing your assessments and your tests uh, through Google Classrooms. Okay. Thank you all for joining class. I'll have to rush to the next class. Um, have a blessed day and a blessed and a refreshing weekend. And see you all next week. Thank you, Krisha.